Good morning, Hurley Hawks. It's Mrs. Lambert here with a new box of books for you. Okay, who's ready? I'm ready. It's been a little while. The Time of Green Magic. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What magic lives in the ivy-covered house? Ooh. When Obby's father marries Max and Louise's mom, their families start over together. Obby suddenly finds herself the middle child, expected to share far too much, especially with grubby little Louis. Then they move into an eerie ivy-covered house big enough for all of them. But for the children in that house, strange things start to happen. Ooh, does that sound good to anyone? That's me. Ooh, nice cover. Maya and the Rising Dark. 12-year-old Maya is daydreaming about summer break, break in her South Side Chicago neighborhood when she witnesses the color bleed from the world. She's the only one who sees it and the other weird occurrences like the were hyenas stalking the streets at night? Not to mention there's a scary man made of shadows plaguing her dreams? Her best friends try to find a reasonable explanation, perhaps a ghost uprising or a lunchroom pudding experiment gone awry. But to Maya, it sounds like something from one of Papa's fantastical stories or her favorite Oya comics. Ah, <gasps> ooh. Right. Ooh. Rise of Zombert. That's fun. One afternoon, nine year old Melly Gore and her best friend Danny find a scraggly, smelly cat behind the Yum Co. Foods factory. He's the ugliest cat Melly has ever seen, but she rescues him anyway and names him Bert. There's something about this cat. It's almost like he needs her. Soon, it's clear that Bert is not like other cats. He's decapitating all of Melly's stuffed animals. Oh my. <clears throat> and eventually leaving headless corpses of real animals as gifts? Could Bert actually be a zombie? Ooh. Who's that sound fun to? Anyone? Ragweed and Poppy. Where are my Poppy lovers? Ooh, look at that. Ragweed, independent and newly citified, boards a freight train out of Amberville. Leaving his dear friends behind, on the train he meets Lotar, a most lo bothersome young raccoon who greatly complicates his journey. But it's Lotar who actually gets Ragweed to Dimwood Forest where he discovers a cage with a trapped mouse inside. Oh my. There we go. Mac B Kid Spy. Ooh. Well, this is just the newest installment in this series. We have all of them here at Hurley. So if you've been reading this series, here's your next one. Stella Endicott and the Anything is Possible poem. This is our newest installment from Tales from Dekawoo Drive. Stella Endicott loves her teacher, Miss Liliana, and she is thrilled when the class is assigned to write a poem. Stella crafts a beautiful poem about Mercy Watson, the pig who lives next door. A poem complete with a metaphor and full of curiosity and courage. Ooh, who's been reading Tales from Dekawoo Drive? There's a lot of you out there. Midnight at the Barkley Hotel. Mm. When J.J. Jacobson convinced his mom to accept a surprise invitation to an all expenses paid weekend getaway at the illustrious Barkley Hotel, he never imagined that he'd find himself in the midst of a murder mystery. He thought he was in for a run-of-the-mill weekend ghost hunting at the most haunted spot in town. But when he arrives at the Barclay Hotel, 
and his mother is blamed for the hotel owner's death? Oh my. He realizes his weekend is going to be anything but ordinary. <gasps> Ooh, who's that sound good to? Me, me, me. The Candy Mafia. In a city where candy is outlawed, Nellie Faulkner is a 12-year-old private detective itching for her next client. So when notorious candy gangster Eddie DeMinth struts into her office and asks her to find a missing teddy bear, Nell is on the case. But as soon as the teddy bear turns up, Eddie himself goes missing. As a seemingly innocent investigation unravels into something more sinister, Nell and her friends quickly find themselves swept up in a shady underworld of sweet smugglers, back alley deals, and storefront fire bombs. Ooh, that's an adventure right there. A pinch of magic. All Betty Wittershins wants is an adventure, one that takes her far away from the gloomy island where she's always lived. But instead of an adventure, Betty and her sisters Fliss and Charlie are each given a magical object, a carpet bag, a set of nesting dolls, and a mirror. And these gifts come with their own terrible secret. Their family is haunted by a deadly curse. Dun, dun, dun. The sisters set out to change their fate but when a mysterious prisoner claims he can help them, they find themselves in great danger. Who's that sound good to? Woo, I like it. Oh, what about worms? Oh, Tiger is big, Tiger is brave, and Tiger is not afraid of anything except worms. Are Tiger's worm worries worse than worms? Oh. Who does that look adorable to? Me. What's this one? Who ate my book? Someone is taking bites out of this book. I have a feeling a certain goat has something to do with it. Oh no, don't let goats near my library books, please. <clears throat> Scaredy snacks! Ah! <clears throat> It's cleaning day in the snack cabinet and cheese doodle, pretzel, and sprinkles are hard at work. When the food friends learn that someone has moved in next door though, they make like bananas and split <laughs> to go meet their new neighbor. But when their knock not only goes unanswered, but also opens the door to Dr. Nuttenstein's house with a creak, what they find inside leaves them as shaken as if they've been placed in a blender. Oh my! Look at the back too. Doesn't that look fun? I like it. What is this? Space bot! Late one night when a robotic dog from outer space lands in the backyard, Pup is hoping they will be friends. Space bot has other plans. Oh no! Look at the back. So cute. Real dog, space dog. Robo baby. Huh, two robots in a row. Fun. Welcome to Robo Baby, number one supplier of babies. Just place your order and baby will arrive in a custom container with easy to follow instructions. <coughs> That sounds cute. And look at the back. Meet the family. Jewels versus the ocean. Cute. Who loves going to the ocean? Me, 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 me. Jules knows just how to get her sister's attention. She will build the biggest, fanciest sandcastle on the beach. It will be most impressive. But the ocean, the ocean has other plans. Cute. Last one. It's the last one. Our box is empty. 
my stinky summer. Ew. June 13th, I hatched today. Hooray, said nobody but me. June 29th, there were some really good things to eat here, but why did everyone keep saying, ew, stink bug? I don't think I smell so bad. Hmm, what kind of animal, or should we say insect, is this book about, you think, if we're calling it stinky? Why don't you check it out and find out? It's actually nonfiction. <laughs> all right, friends, that's it for us this time. We are all out of books. The box is empty. I hope something looked exciting to you and that I see you request it soon. Have a wonderful day, my friends. Bye.